Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Martin Hamilton from JISC. I'm your chair for this session. And I'm joined by Natalie from Sixth Form College, Farnborough, who's going to talk to us all about Google Classroom. We've got a nice long session scheduled here, so don't be shy. You can ask lots of questions. We can have a little bit of an interactive discussion. We'll make the mic roam around. So hold that thought. We'd love to hear what you think about this. So it's not just us talking to you. But without further ado, over to Natalie. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank you all for being with me. I know there's loads of sessions that you probably wanted to choose from, so I am very grateful. Um, I am Natalie McGuinness, and I'm from the Sixth Form College in Farnborough. So we teach exclusively 16 to 19 year olds. Um, we're on the border of three counties. So we have Hampshire, Surrey and Berkshire. So we're tapping into quite a large audience. We have about 4,000 students. Um, so we're really trying to kind of get our growth where it needs to be, but not doing it in very not cost effective ways. Um, so I am a Google advocate. I love Google with all my heart. Um, in my school lanyard, I've got my little Chrome badge that I wear proudly. So. Hopefully you'll get something from today. Um, I'm happy to chat to any of you afterwards as well. So let's go. Um, so just a little idea of some of the apps that we're using with Google. I uh, wanted to do it in a prettier way as opposed to writing them all down. So we're using Classroom very heavily. Gmail is across the whole cohort of the staff and students. Um, Drive, we've got Calendar, YouTube, Doc, Sheet, Slides and Sites. This is now expanded, we've got more. Uh, so we started using Google Forms as well to gather some feedback from sessions um, and to get an idea of where students need extra support. So I want to focus on one of my subjects and this is the CTEC Level 3 uh, Cambridge Technical in Business. So we introduced this course three years ago um, and we had planned for just one group of students and we ended up with five. So suddenly, we were in this position where we had to create an extra four classes, but not cost any money because we didn't have the budget for it. So my colleague Anya and I designed the materials entirely online. And what it meant is that all we needed is extra, extra computers as opposed to having lots of printouts and folders and all of that kind of stuff. Since that point, in the following year, we had a 200% growth in students. We are now in our third year of running this course, and because we operate online, we've had an additional 50% growth. We've got first year students as standard first year students. We've got second year students as standard second year students. We've got second year students just doing the first year course, and we've been allowed students to do a tunnel course, so they will complete an A-level in a year. We've been able to do that. It's not caused any harm, any fuss. We've just adapted to the resources that we already had. So these are some pretty pictures of some of my babies working away. Um, so we were fortunate enough that we were able to have some of the Chrome bases put into our college. Um, we originally had them in a shared learning environment, so we had them in our Dell where we have, I think it's about 50 or 60 computers. Um, what our help desk, our IT help desk, didn't like though is that they couldn't monitor what the students were going on whilst they were in that area. And the shared learning space was supposed to be to do study and to catch up with any work as opposed to going on Facebook and eBay and all of that kind of stuff. So we took them out of the Dell and put standard PCs back in and we commandeered the Chrome bases. And what it meant is their beautiful large screens is really useful for split screening work. So we have an online textbook um, which means that students can have the textbook open on one side and complete their coursework on the other. Um, all of the coursework is submitted online, so nothing gets printed out, which is really great for us because it means we can do instant feedback. They can, we can also see what's happening at the same time that it's happening, so we can see how productive they are in lessons. But we wanted to expand out. So it's all very well keeping the computer and online aspect within coursework-based subjects, but what about our core A-level subjects? Our classes are growing, so originally we had 18 students in a class, now we're faced with 21, 22, up to about 24 students. And I know for school teachers that sounds like a small number, I do understand. But when it comes to A-levels, suddenly the subject content becomes quite intense and we have students at very different capabilities. So it's trying to find ways to tap into 
their learning skills, uh, what knowledge they already have, and how to extend that knowledge too. So these are some of my AS economic students. Uh, they did know I was taking pictures, which is probably why they look like they're working hard. Um, but as you can see, we have little trolleys of Chromebooks as well. Um, these little bad boys are probably about five years old now, the little Samsung versions of the Chromebooks. Um, they're still going strong. We've had one or two cracked screens. We won't mention them. But they get used. We have about 13 business, economics and accounting teachers. And at the moment, we only have four trolleys. But we find ways to make it work. So we book them out to make sure that everybody's happy, uh, just have a shared calendar so we know where they are and who's using them at what time. But what this means is that I don't have to teach them everything. I can develop their independent learning skills by guiding them to where they need to go. I don't have to say, this is the exact definition. I can say, research, how do we use interest rates in the economy? What's the current inflation rate? They are finding real information. They're, they're having to kind of contextualize and conceptualize their topics, their knowledge, rather than me just standing at the front and lecturing. So I found it really useful. What I did also find though, is they don't like doing this sort of stuff every single lesson. So I do have to spread out when I use the Chromebooks and when I use kind of the online research approach, because they're not ready for it yet. They're not ready to do everything by themselves, but they like, they like having it every now and again. So since we started the CTEC course, uh, we've actually changed the way we've delivered it every year. In our first year, we just had Google Drive. And it was very much, create a folder, now share that folder with me. Cool, now we have a shared folder. In the second year, we got Classroom, so we had Google Classroom, we could set assignments, and it meant that students had a copy, it was all in one neat place. What we now have is Google Sites. So all of our resources, all of our materials, the link to our e-textbook, the link to our classroom, again, is in a really cute website, and it's just improved the delivery of our course. It's not a massive change, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, kind of publish a report on this, but for us, it's made our delivery that little bit easier. Each year, we've had something new. So this is our our lovely sites. I know it's not particularly pretty and if you're in, in the IT industry and web design and stuff, you'll probably hate it. But for us, it's basic, it works. 18 year olds who have just turned 18 and maybe not the brightest on a Monday morning, they can find the resources very easily. We have some videos embedded. This was a big deal for us. We have videos and we have presentations <coughs> embedded in the site, so it's all in one place. They don't have to click through to a link to see something else, it's all there. When they click on things, they then get taken to a single folder. And that folder has all the resources they would need. So if they are ill, or actually ill, then they can catch up on the lessons that they've missed. There's no excuse for coursework to not be done if they're not in college. Now this, this for me is where Classroom is incredible because of the kind of behind the scenes stuff that happens. So I set an assignment, great but it's all the other stuff that comes with it. So each student will get a copy. I now don't have to have 46 untitled documents in my Google Drive, which is great. Google does it for me, it names them, I know exactly who's done what, and if it's handed in or not. So where I've got 17 done and zero not done, that's good for me. I don't have to chase up any of the naughty little ones that haven't handed it in. We can now separate the stuff that we're handing out on Google Classroom, so it puts it into the correct units, or in economics we teach in the strand of micro and macro, so we can again filter out all the macro work or all the micro work. Again, it's just little things that make our lives a little bit easier to organize. And then the best one, the best, is that the deadline syncs to their phones, so they have no excuse as to why they've not handed it in on time. They try and get around it, but oh no, it's on their phones, okay? And that's the only thing they look at anyway. So it's there, they have to remember, little reminders pop up, not only the day before, but 10 minutes before. So there's been a few kind of quickly type up on their phone that they've handed in, but at least it's done, okay? They've got the deadline, and then we can focus on how maybe to improve the work. So this is the other thing I really like. Um, 
As I say, because we set things through Classroom, what that means is that you have instant access to it. So as a practitioner, that's really nice for us um, because we can monitor how much work is being done. So we can directly ask them, how much work have you done this lesson? And they can try and fob us off and say that they've done 84 paragraphs. And when you look, they've done a sentence. And actually, there is actual stuff to say, no, you haven't worked to the best of your abilities. You've made more work for yourself now. That was your decision, but look, it's clearly there. And I know, I know that's not the way that we should operate, but actually it makes them reflect on how they are using class time. So for this, uh, we could see where the student was working, so I could help him out exactly where he needed to be. So he wanted a little support on how to develop this stock number. It meant I could deal with it instantly and I could see where the problems were happening. This was really useful because we did business ratios a little while ago. So I could easily see where in the formula they've maybe picked up the wrong number or did a multiply as opposed to a divide. So that for me, I found that person very useful. The last edit that was made as well, I put that on just as a little fun, fun thing because they turn around and say that they've done a little work and you can see that they haven't been on their work for 26 minutes. So you can kind of pull them up and say, get back on it, come on. Um, so for our coursework, everything has to be marked, ready for the moderator to see. Um, I know we're quite used to the traditional style of marking on a piece of paper, but I wanted to show you how we mark coursework entirely online. So we were able to find a little add-on tool. Um, so where it up the top, it just says add-ons in between table and help. We found a little highlighter tool, and that just pops up along the side of our work. And it means you don't always have to then click into the paint pot and then, and then the highlighter. Um, and it just makes life really easier. We can stick to the literacy policy that we've got in place. So the spelling and grammar gets identified. Um, so they had put a gap between all days limited when it should have been one business word. Um, so I was able to pick that up. And where they've met the criteria, we can just highlight and comment where they've met the past, the merit and the distinction work. And thankfully, if you, any of you operate with OCR, a lot more of the moderators are more than happy to work in this context. They don't expect to see kind of reams and reams of paper anymore. They're quite happy to have it all in one place online. So we put our coursework feedback into one neat place. So this is our unit recording sheet. Um, and the moderator has access to that as well. So she's able to check the sample piece of work. And if she wants to look at any others, then again, she can just access, access that sheet. Um, and then we put the link into their coursework so she doesn't have to have lots of different tabs open. She's able to click on the one link and it takes her straight through to the coursework. We've also been able to link in where we internally modify, uh, sorry, verify the work um, so she can see which sample work has, has taken place. So again, it's just about organisation and neatness and not having reams of paper printed off. We couldn't grow in the way that we had if we were doing everything in paper format. It just wouldn't have worked. Now this is one I quite like. So this was what I did for my economics students. Um, we had quite a lot of essays that had been set for homework, and I wanted to mix something up, try something new. So I paired them up, but across the classroom. So they weren't sat with the person that they were working with, but instead they had a single document between the pair of them and they had to answer the homework. Now this was cool, I was putting it up on the screen. I did have to overcome the initial issue of 17 year olds seeing their work on the screen and realizing they could put rude words up and everybody would see it so we got over that to start with but then it became a useful tool so they can work together i can see exactly who's contributed what so that kind of takes away the coaster within the group work um, we can just identify okay well you contributed that you supported each other on that and it's just another way to try and build exam technique sometimes the essay writing can get a bit tedious it might not work for some of you. I know some teachers have not enjoyed that particularly, but for me, it was just to mix it up, make the lessons a bit more exciting. So I got asked a couple days ago, uh, who inspires me? And my response was my mum. Now she knows I'm showing this video. I do have to pay her royalties in Prosecco. Um, but my mum has taught forever. And she's been at the same school she's been at for longer than I've been alive. And she's coming towards the end of her career now, and really sadly, and it breaks my heart, but she's beginning to lose her passion for teaching itself. So she teaches textiles, and every year she's had to face different constraints. 
whether it be that she's only got six computers but 30 students, or her sewing machines are beginning to die, or she's having to teach cooking lessons in 50 minutes whilst also stopping people from burning themselves. So we just thought we'd give it a go and see whether she could use the flipped classroom approach to her year nine BTEX. So we sat her down and she recorded how to make this Sean Avery bird. The students had to watch the video at home, take notes, come into class and get straight into it. So if it's okay with you, I'd just like to show a few little bits of the video. Hopefully this works. is for your next lesson which is going to be about 3D art and we're going to base it on an Australian artist or sculptor who's known as Sean Avery. He uses a metal frame, he used chicken wire actually, to make an armature and this frame is what he uses to create his beautiful birds and animals which are using recycled CDs. couple of examples here to show you. There's some of the birds and some of the wonderful animals that he has created. Into a cylinder. You can use these extra pieces of wire to twist round and hold your cylinder in place. This is called an armature. So we have formed our cylinder and we're going to use these pieces of wire that we cut to twist around and secure our cylinder in place. So we got a little bit of feedback from the students that had done this approach or the lesson. And one of the key things is that they said they felt empowered. Now they didn't necessarily use that word because they are year nine students, so it's more like, yeah miss, it was sick. But, they interpreted that as they felt empowered. Um, but the really great thing for mum was that within 50 minutes, she actually got a huge range of differentiation. So she had the learners that needed a little bit more support, that by the end of it they had completed the bird. So they had a finished product in 50 minutes. You then had the other learners that got that pretty quickly and by the end of it they were creating cages, some had done paper flowers to sit in around the cage, so they were able to extend what they had done in that 50 minutes. And she's now beginning to build a few more of these. She said it took a little bit of confidence to have to do that and the time to create it, but it meant her lesson itself was much, much easier. And it went at a really nice pace. She didn't have to do the demonstration at the front and watch students pulling each other's hair or trying to set their blazers alight or anything like that. The lesson, as soon as they walked in the door, they knew what they had to do and everything was done, done well. And as I say, the extension kind of builds into that. So the key things I'd like you to maybe take away from this is that Google Sites is incredible for kind of resource accessibility. The key phrases that I've heard quite a lot around here are inclusion and accessibility. And I think Sites really taps into that. It's in one place, they can access it on their phones. It's regularly updated because it's automatically linked to Drive, so you're not having to remember to update the resources. They can catch up on notes. They can tap into other teachers' notes as well, if yours aren't maybe what they want from. The deadline's linked to calendar, my favorite. Uh, coursework is all in neat one folder in Drive. It's all kind of in the same place. The moderator knows how, where it is, and every teacher in the team knows where it is. There's a reduction in costs, so we can put our funds towards other things. So we can put it into training. We can have employers coming in and running sessions. Um, we can extend what we do in other aspects of the college as opposed to just having it on photocopying everything in sight. There's real-time feedback and document history, so the moderator can see who's done what. This avoids the whole thing of plagiarism, because we can see if anybody's shared work, we can see if anybody's added to each other's work, so that's a real, real key thing for us. Um, and the real-time feedback, uh, for my CTEC course right now, I don't have any marking to do outside of lesson, because it's done in lesson as the students ask for help. 
and they begin to see, can you mark this paragraph? Can you just check this? And suddenly my marking is reduced massively because it's done in lesson when they need it. Collaboration, so this is a skill that we don't necessarily kind of work into further ed education, I don't think. Um, we're very much, you have to sit that exam by yourself, so you need to figure this out by yourself. But when they go into the workplace, you're not often left alone to do things by yourself. So collaboration is a key thing for me. And then pre preparation for work in higher education. Um, not all of our students go on to HE, so some do go straight into the workplace. And at least this, they've got the, the digital capabilities. They know how to work across the Google platforms, and I know that's not what every workplace uses, but at least they've got the confidence to work in, in the Google platform, so they can be taught how to use other platforms. And that's kind of it. So if you guys have any questions, then I will happily answer them. And where you come back. <laughs> that's right. So thank you very much for uh, what I'd like to, to think we've done now is warmed you up and that you'll have lots of questions for Natalie, and maybe some comments about how you use Google tools. We're going to use this as a roving, well, no, we've got a roving mic. <laughs> Who would like to go first? You, sir. I'm Colin Barney, I'm from Worcestershire County Council. Um, what was the uh, pitfalls or the, the, the problems that you experienced that, that you overcame? Um, so we've had quite a few in terms of resistance, mainly from staff, which I guess is a key thing in most establishments. Um, but once they begin to see how easily the rest of the team operate, they do kind of naturally begin to adopt just little aspects here and there. So they suddenly don't print out one exam, they do it online. And they suddenly don't have um, mark schemes printed out everywhere, they book out the Chromebook. So it's little things like that that you begin to introduce just tiny aspects to start with. And it, I think support is really important. Um, so I, there's a lot of teachers that are quite grounded in their ways. And the collaboration within departments, I think, is a really good approach as well. Can I just ask, you rolled it out over three years. Yeah. Uh, I, I gather that helped you because it was a, a gradual introduction. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so it, well, it wasn't. It was. Uh, we went for it in year one, and we were waiting to see how it would work. And it's just that it's grown every year. Um, so last last year was the first year we had the second year running, and then this year we've had the full course running, but the first year of tunnel course students. So it's just that each year we've had a new approach to the CTEC. Um, we have had issues. I mean, plagiarism was the biggest thing. So students didn't realise the importance of not using each other's work. And it wasn't until we used uh, Turnitin, the system built into our Moodle, so we had to use another platform. So that is a hope that Google will integrate some sort of plagiarism checker. Um, but we used the system and we got a 98% similarity rate. So we had to pull them in and kind of say, like, this, this isn't going to work. You go on to university, your work will get disqualified. You could get disqualified from the exam boards. So there was something that we hadn't even considered, and that was absolute naivety on our point. So we started again with those students and supported them to build their own individual pieces of work. Um, but it was getting our heads around the scope of uh, what Google could offer and making sure that we were using it in a positive way and not just as another thing to have to remember. So I, I've got a cheeky question of my own, which is, <laughs> I, when you said about students coming along and, you know, no excuses now, it's in your calendar. Yeah. How many of those Google tools were your students already using? Were, we, did you find that there are things like Google Docs and Drive, they just said, oh, I, I use that every day already. Uh, how many of them did they need to be um, encouraged to explore? Okay. Um, so surprisingly, not a lot of them were introduced to the Google platform. So they used Gmail, and they were quite confident with Gmail, but hadn't utilized the other platforms. Um, and now we've seen a lot more of the students automatically doing their work on the Google platforms. And it means they don't have to worry about bringing USBs in. So all the, all the college is on the Google platform. So all homeworks and stuff can be had in the same way. Um, but what's also good is that students with Macs now suddenly don't have to worry about buying the Microsoft license. Um, so they can use Google Docs on their Macs quite easily. 
um, and we can use it on iPads and stuff. It all works very neatly and nobody has to worry about having a set program or anything. So more of them are using it because we use it at college. And, and I've got a question for the audience now. So we, we talked about plagiarism detection. As we have a whole bunch of people here, I think it'd be interesting to take a little vox pop. So put your hand up if your institution uses Google Classroom already. And now put your hand down. I'll keep your hand up if you use Google Classroom and that plagiarism detection thing is an issue for you. So it might be interesting to um, have a chat with you guys at the end. Maybe we'll just form a little huddle and perhaps do a little bit of concerted lobbying. So we know, we know that we've got several institutions represented here that have the same issue that Farnborough has. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just do this in, in one system? Yeah. <laughs> so, who would like to go next with a question? Lady in the striped top? <laughs> I feel like David Dimble. <laughs> right, so I can see the advantages when, when children in college, but what about the most disadvantaged children outside of college that don't have access to internet? So, I had this issue last year, actually, and again, this was... Um, Naivety, but again, I, I, because I have been brought up having the internet, it didn't even cross my mind. And this young lady didn't have the internet at home, and she didn't have a smartphone, which was actually really rare in our college. Um, but we, as an institute, have a bank of tablets and Chromebooks that they can book out. So she was able to, whilst in college, um, she was able to use our devices. Um, what we were also able to do is that she was able to borrow one of those laptops and with Google Docs you can edit them offline and then when you come back into a Wi-Fi system everything updates so she could still work on her coursework and then not necessarily include the internet references or anything like that but as soon as she got back into college all her coursework would update and then we could build in the, the business evidence behind it so that was really useful for our college to support her in such a way and the fact that Google allowed you to edit it offline that's great. Okay, who wants to go next? Lady at the back? <laughs> sorry, Mary. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm supposed to say, would you mind saying your name and where you're from? Now I sound like Stella Black. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Pooja Pond from Birmingham Metropolitan College. I um, just wanted to find out, uh, you've implemented Google Classroom. Um, is there still a place for your VLE or has it now become obsolete? Um, so we've had this argument across the college and some people are still very kind of involved in the Moodle system. Personally for me I found it quite clunky um, and then a lot more of people have moved over to sites. So what we've done is we've created a college-wide study directory and that's on our college website. So you can open that and then it's a link to each of the subjects and then it takes them to whatever VLE they would prefer to use. We don't tend to steer away from either Moodle or, or Google, um, but it just meant that you didn't have to go through Moodle for one of your subjects and then Google for the other. It's just in one neat place and you can click the link and it takes you through to where you need to be. So that was the only way we could really get around it for now. I think we're possibly in the next couple of years, Moodle won't be in our college just because we have, I can't remember what the split is, but I know the majority certainly work on Google platforms. I, I've got another question yeah. now, just, just to pick up on something about devices. So I know the, the um, student who didn't have access to the internet, didn't have a laptop at home, probably didn't have you know, an iPad or something like that. No. And I was kind of wondering about whether, whether you find that students tend to pitch up mobile first let's say and you put a laptop in front of them and they say oh i really i don't really like using these or i'm you know i wouldn't normally choose to use a laptop give me a tablet <laughs> um it is quite interesting for our coursework they like being on desktops so they hate working on on our chromebooks they said that they're a bit too little so for coursework it has to be a desktop they like the big screen um for if we're in lesson, and I tend to say this to my students quite a lot, and I've been using it today, so if there's a slide and they want to take the notes, they take a picture of it on their phone instantly, and then it's next to them. But they can access my presentation as I'm doing it, if they like, so as a lot of them do have their phones next to them. I do have to check that they're not on Snapchat or anything, um, but they have the presentation open next to them. 
But I give them the option, if I'm doing a research-based lesson, the Chromebooks are there if they want to use it. I always, whether they want to or not, the textbooks are always available if they would like. Um, and if they want to use their own devices, then that's fine. We've got a college Wi-Fi. Um, there's firewalls in place, so they can't go on particular websites. So it stops that kind of distraction within class. And yes, they do go on social media. That is a thing. But, I mean, you and I probably both know that when we're watching TV, we find ourselves on Instagram or Facebook, and we're not even sure why we're doing both of those things. Um, so there, every now and again, it's just taking it to, to snap out of what they're doing, and they get back on task or calling them out for why they're smiling at their crotch in the middle of my lesson tends to work. So it is, it is an issue to overcome. They do get distracted by their phones, but I also think we're moving into the technological age, or we're in it, so we're going to have to embrace it. Otherwise, they're just going to become even more resistant. Okay, good stuff. Who would like to go next? Hi, uh, Connor Bradley, Borders College. Just kind of a question from like a institution point of view. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of institutions, you know, you need to collect together, assess works like that. There might be requirements. You need to hold on to that for three years, etc. Is you know, if you know something crazy happened to you, would your institution be able to get to the assessments, assignments, work, comments, etc. That you've done, or is that all held under your login? And no, so that's done under our subject. So um, everything is attached to our, our subject area as opposed to being a tie, tied to the individual people. And it was because of that issue. We didn't ever want a teacher to be left in the lurch or a subject to have just disappeared because one person had left. So we, we made sure that it's all done in a singular shared drive that is then shared with our learning technologist. And that learning technologist is a, a kind of broad email. So although we have a learning technologist, uh, whoever steps into that role would then become the owner of that work. So that was the only way we could get around it, is have kind of a singular email that they were then attached to and monitored, so that if anybody decided to move on or whatever, that we still had access to everything. Um, and that's what's quite nice in Classroom as well, is that although it's assigned to my name, again, the technologist is on there, uh, you can see the archived Classroom. So my Classroom's from last year, you can still access, and all the work is still there, and all the comments are still there. So we can track back from when we started using Classroom, we can see everything that's happened up until the point today. So I, I've got another question for you. Okay. And I'm kind of interested in the extent to which people are comfortable using the Google tools. So, you know, they're using the apps on their phones or they're using uh, the web delivered tools. And I'm wondering, and sometimes you hear people say, oh, well, there's only so much you can do on here. Yeah. Actually, um, we need to break out the computer. And, and I wondered if you'd have that experience, whether you found that the ecosystem around the Google Suite now is so mature that every app that you've needed could be delivered through G Suite, through Google Apps. I think, I think it's certainly answering everything that I need right now, apart from... The, the Google Suite, I haven't found um, a fun way to deliver quizzes. And it was actually my students that kind of forced me to then start using Kahoot, which I'm sure probably you've all been bored to death with. Um, but they love it. I'm also enjoying the music that plays along. It sounds like I'm waiting for a ride in Thought Park, so it kind of makes it bearable. Um, but that's the only thing that I found. So I've used Google Forms to collect feedback, but actually it's not a fun way to deliver a quiz. Whereas this is on the screen and they put rude nicknames up, so we have to talk about that. But that's that's the only thing that I'm uh, currently that I find is missing, and obviously the plagiarism checker. I think I think that's an essential way forward for um, for the G Suite itself. Okay, who'd like to go next? Put your hand up if you want to ask a question or make a comment. Hi, um, I'm Charlie Hammond from Colic Cigar. It's more it's more a comment really okay. than a question. Um, it's great listening to you Natalie and what, uh, what I've been listening to is really <coughs> I'd make, mirrored my own experiences uh, uh, and, and hearing some of the questions about this, these dual platforms, are we still using Moodle, are we going between the two? Um, I think I've just sort of gone through that phase and my, my Moodles are now in the closet somewhere and, and uh, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm an absolute advocate of the uh, Google Classroom. Mm. <clears throat> One real benefit that uh, we found is 
that we're getting our students to create e-portfolios through Google Sites for when they leave. Yeah. And they're putting in a lot of their work from their learner files into their e-portfolios. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> and a couple of light bulb moments that we've had were students saying, if I'd have known my work was going into an e-portfolio, I would have spent more time on it. Oh, really? <coughs> yeah, so we're, we're just getting to this stage now where we are getting a set of learners leaving with a completed e-portfolio through Google Sites. And they're saying, uh, if I'd have known this work was going in there. So it, we've got a real circulating platform. And now that Google have got accounts that they can switch accounts, so when they leave, they can move on. And that's also got implications from compulsory education into college. Yeah. So if we can get into the schools, that transfer of accounts will make the transition into FE much, much smoother as well. Absolutely, it's that it's that joined up way of thinking, isn't it? Yeah. That kind of having coherent ways of working. And I, I think it was Dave this morning from the University of Arts London, who was saying about that we one of the key things for his students is that they want him, they want them to build um, kind of workplace or employability identities. And you're doing that by having the online portfolios. You are beginning to build their identities, and actually, that's that's great for them. They can use the sites to build their portfolios or even if they want to do more of a social approach and create their bloggers um, even trying to use Pinterest that kind of stuff I know it's not part of the G Suite but just trying to find that identity online is really important and Google is accessible for that and it's really user friendly and that's what's really nice the work's already there and it's so easy to transfer it into the online presence and I think it's wonderful so thank you <laughs> Th thanks for that who'd like to go next Questions and comments, they're both good. I'm sure there's somebody. Ah, yes, yes. Hi, I'm Ashley Garner from Redbridge College. Um, I know Google are good at analytics. What sort of analytics have you got in terms of your classroom about? Can you check progress? Can you see who's engaging and who's not? Are there, you know, is there sort of dashboards or anything like that? Yeah, so um, I tend to only focus on my students and that is by having the work open and seeing when the last edits were made and all of that kind of stuff. But we do have our learning technologist who has been able to track the engagement in the different Google, uh, Google apps. And that's why, that was kind of the key driver as to why we shouldn't renew Moodle. Um, staff were resistant, which is why we've kept it for another year. But I think it was it was the majority of about 80% were focused on the G Suite as opposed to using the Moodle platforms, and that was the key driver as to why we've made the transition and why we've made it so intensely. Um, for me, as I say, it's about it's about personal progression in coursework. So I, I avoid kind of what, looking at the other stats and the data behind it, just because I want to make sure that whether that person has completed a paragraph in 20 minutes, that's a massive success for them, or whether they've only done a sentence and they've managed to distract themselves for 20 minutes, that's, that's more important, personally for me anyway, but obviously we, all, we would have different motives for that, but that is tracked and, and that was the driver for why we shouldn't use the dual platform, but we've had to stick with it for another year. <laughs> Well, wow, you, you, get, you get applause for that one. <laughs> so I, I've got a, another one of my questions for the audience now. So we're, we're doing some work around learning analytics, which I suspect a, a few of the institutions here are involved in the pilot of or, or are aware of. And we're very interested in, for instance, systems like uh, Google Classroom. Would you value getting a feed from Google Classroom of activity data in the learning analytics system? We're building this as a shared service and we want to interface to the key systems and services that people are using at institutions. I see some nodding. If this is interesting to you, you put your hand up just so you get a little bit of a feeling. So there's a little cluster of you. So we had a little cluster around um, plagiarism, a little cluster around learning analytics. I don't know, there's only, there's only the two of us, but I think between the two of us, two clusters, maybe um, if, we, if we call it a day, in about 10 minutes, then perhaps our two clusters could have a little bit more of a chat. 
So, who would like to go next? Anyone else like a question or a comment? Hi, my name's Rebecca Coyne. I work in Group Flinders Lumini, North Wales. My question is this, how long did it take the staff, or is it just you, to develop everything you needed to set in motion your course on the, using the G Suite? So not that long, surprisingly. Um, it was two of us that set it up originally, um, but what we did, it was absolutely collaborative and um, we kind of took on units we worked together we were checking each other's work the whole way through that the course got agreed I think maybe in the Easter and we had it all written before the summer so that really didn't take you long and that was three units um, and we were then able to replicate that style of working but we'd expanded the team slightly so again we brought in the collaborative approach and what's just been approved is um, we're now going to offer the double award for this, so they'll be, be able to do two A-levels in two years. And because we've got such a strong foundation to work from, from this point we should be able to write six units between now and when we start teaching it in September. So it, it doesn't take long. The initial understanding of it and actually playing with it, and that's the key word I want to use, is play with Google, because anything you do can always be rectified. Even if you think you've deleted the internet, you can somehow get it back. So play with Google. That's, Sometimes that's, I think that might be a good idea. <laughs> just delete re, it all. <laughs> restart. Yeah. Um, so, so getting our heads around that and what we could do was the hardest part. But the actual content building. Um, and OCR uh, have been quite good in having the online textbook and that kind of stuff. So it kind of lent itself into the... the, the so, OCR. Yeah, they're an exam board that we work with. So sorry, apologies. Um, so yeah, they, they were quite... Kind of supportive of our decision to run it as an online course but the actual content was quite easy to build it was just that playing that took the longest part do you have a, a test google domain do you, have you got a sort of playpen sandpit yeah we do we we have a room where you can go in and you can explore new things and we've also created a, a training suite so rather than our learning technologist being the only person to deliver training sessions He's again done the whole like a champion thing, so we called it Athena. Um, so certain people around the college just say, well I'm quite confident in this, if anybody would like support then let's hook up when our timetables match. And it just means that it's not all on one person, it's spread across the college. Because we've got about 300 members of staff, so we should be using each other really. So that's part of, part of the fun. <laughs> Another question from me to the audience. So, so we have a few people who are using Google Classroom at their institutions already. Are there, are there people here today who are interested in it who might perhaps like to buddy up with somebody who's already using it? So if you're interested, if you're considering it, put your hand up. So people who are already using it, remember who those people were. And when we, when we call this, this formal bit to a close, you might want to and I have a chat, grab a coffee, and, and share your experiences. So please, please do that. Ne next question or comment? Who would like to have a go? Don't be shy. Have we got one more? Looking around, yes, you sir in the corner. We're just making <laughs> our work now. You're working for your business. You're getting your steps up, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's it, have, have a chocolate brownie afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wondered if you used any other tools like Hangouts or anything like that as collaboration you know, with the institution. Um, so I, this is very poor to say, I used Hangouts for the first time because I got invited to present on the Education on Air, so the Google Education on Air show. Um, and I had to then teach myself how to use it. And again, I just, I just played around with what was necessary. Um, and that was really good, that was really fun to actually test my limits of, of what I knew and what I didn't know. So I haven't used it in class yet. To be honest, I tend to use it just to message my colleague to say, I think it's time for coffee. Um, but that's, that's a tool for you, a little sneaky one to have a hangout and get coffee. Um, but I do think it's something that I would like to integrate in terms of how we can use um, again the collaboration within it but also about how you can maybe record 
the lectures that can then become accessible later on as opposed to having the video. Because I think that puts a lot of teachers off. They don't want to be recorded. They don't want their face to potentially be defaced in any way. That at least if it's just a voice recording, that is quite a nice thing for students to tap into. Okay. Have we got, have we got another one? I'm looking around. Anyone like to raise their hand and ask a question? If not, I may come up with another one of my own. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Well, one over there. Oh. <laughs> Should be very fit by the end of this. Hi, Pete Lonsdale, Keele University. Um, we've tried using this, and I don't know if this differs from your experience. We have students engaged in courses that run over a long period of time, so we get lots of content in there. Uh, I guess this is another feature request to discuss, because my issue is that, amazingly, for a Google product, Classroom still does not have any search function in there. I just wondered if you'd... Well, so we'll pick that up at the end in our little clusters again for feature <laughs> requests, but I just wondered if you'd had any issues with uh, your students being able to find what they were looking for inside the classroom. Um, so because we use sites alongside it, uh, we include the link to our sites in the About stream which means that our classroom has now exclusively become just the assignments, so we filter them between Unit 5 and 8 and all of that kind of stuff. So that's kind of helped with the neatness, but that was our issue last year, that our classrooms just became cluttered, and they can barely find a classroom, let alone a virtual classroom. So that, that was a, an issue for us, but the way we overcame it was to use another platform that was, that was available. So rather than using the old-style sites, which wasn't very pretty, um, we used the new one to put all our content and then just included a link on our classroom but the classroom then just became exclusively for assignments. So that, that was the way we addressed it. Okay, well, one more. Sorry? Um, no. I sh we probably should, but we don't. <laughs> so no, no tags are, are currently being used as opposed to the, the filter is the only thing that we currently is because there's no functionality in Classroom to utilise tags at the moment. You Unless sir. there is, and I don't know, and I apologise. <laughs> um, well, as far as I know so far, it's a free service, but I don't know if there are any concerns about uh, maybe the business model changing and incurring some cost. Um, so there is that worry, and obviously that was mentioned yesterday with Jeff, that was a, a key thing and that the business models aren't necessarily sustainable, but for now it's perfect and I think and a point will come where, where there will be a charge and we would have to look at whether the benefit that we gain from using the G Suite and the connectiveness and kind of everything that we get from Google, whether that's worth the cost that they are potentially going to add to it, or whether we then have to look at another another way of operating. For now, though, for now it's perfect, and I think we just have to stay positive <laughs> that it will stay free for a little bit longer, please. <laughs> and, and just to give a, a bit of context there, you know, um, we think about something like um, the, the G Suite, as we now call it. Um, I used to be an IT manager at a university before I joined JISC, and I actually put uh, G Suite in nine years ago and at that point we, we were looking at should we build our own infrastructure like you used to do you know we'll buy racks full of servers and we costed that up and that would have cost us a quarter of a million pounds for the servers the power the cooling you know that's before we start paying people to look after them and so the the judgment call we made was actually you know if we get if we get g suite free for a few years that maybe we save a quarter of a million pounds, actually probably a bit more, um, and it's nine years later. So although there's always going to be that question, you know, well, business models change, you know, the imperatives change, maybe the antitrust lawyers pay a visit and say, well, you've got to split Google up, and not perhaps in, in the way that radical. I mean, those things could happen, but maybe you still saved half a million pounds, two million pounds along the way, and that's... You know, in the present climate, that's probably not to be sniffed at. Mm. So I think what we should probably do now is call this formal bit to a close. So you may have seen there's a closing plenary, which is at...
345. Do come along to that. Do have a look around at the Digi Lab at the exhibition space and visit our exhibitors beforehand. But I know that there were three groups of people that we identified earlier on. So there are people who are interested in plagiarism detection, there are people who are interested in learning analytics, and there are people who are just interested in having a chat about Google Classroom. So could I be really cheeky now and ask, <laughs> If you're interested in learning analytics, come and just sort of stand in front over here if you'd like to form a little huddle to talk about that. If you'd like to form a little huddle over here if you'd like to talk about uh, plagiarism. And if anybody would like a buddy just to talk about Google Classroom, come and stand here and hopefully somebody who already uses it or knows about it will come along and would like to buddy with you perhaps over a coffee. So you don't have to do this, it's completely optional, but I think it'd be interesting to see if, you know, if we can get something a, a little bit special out of this, a little bit more than just us doing this talk and, and doing the Q&A. So if you're up for it, learning analytics over here, plagiarism over there, buddies in the middle. Meantime though, before everybody goes, thank you so much to Natalie. We really appreciate you coming along today. Can we have a big round? Thank you ever so much. Thank you, everyone.